OK, so we're going to raise the um, heating mantle up into place so that it's nice and snug against the bottom of the round bottom. If you're heating something that's relatively difficult to boil, you might want to add some fiberglass. We call this glass wool uh, around the, t uh, the top to help insulate it, keep the heat in a little bit better. We can put aluminum foil on top of this if we want to uh, insulate it even more. And then let's just turn this on. So we're going to turn the knob, and we'll just set it to something modest. And we'll have to adjust that as we um, heat it up to make sure that we get the, the heating rate that we want, so we get the distillation rate that we want. OK, now, um, so we're starting to heat. Let me make one last point before I sort of break from the camera and, and let this get up to temperature. And that is, it may look like we're heating a closed system here. And obviously, heating a closed system is a bad idea. Uh, Charles's law says that if you heat something uh, in a closed, uh, at constant pressure, the volume is going to go up. And obviously, if the volume of this system wants to go up, it's just going to blow itself apart. You never heat a closed system. But this adapter over here um, attached to the receiving flask has a little sidearm. And this sidearm is open to the air. If you're worried about exposing your, your uh, liquid to the air, you can connect this to a nitrogen line that has a bubbler on it. And that would uh, allow you to heat it in the absence of air but still not have it be a closed system. A bubbler is a device that allows it to regulate the pressure so that the pressure never gets much above one atmosphere. And again, obviously, you don't want everything to get above one atmosphere because then you run the risk of having it blow itself apart and breaking the glass and causing a general disaster. OK, so what we're doing now is we're going to wait for this to come up to temperature. And um, we're going to break for a bit. Oh, I forgot to turn on the water. OK, it's a good idea to turn on the water. What does the water do? Well, the water is going to cool the vapor. Once we get it going, that'll be obvious. You don't need the water on very high. So you can see that it isn't on very high. Having the water on very high just invites disaster as well, because um, the water pressure is gonna, could cause some of these hoses to come off. If you're concerned about it, you can always use copper wire to wire these on. It's making a mess. Make sure that's in the sink. Okay. So now we'll let this come up to temperature. And then once it's actually distilling, I'll come back and tell you some more. OK, so we've got a gentle reflux going now inside this round bottom flask. And uh, reflux, again, is just sort of a gentle boil. And the vapor rises up into this section here. It equilibrates with the thermometer. So the thermometer should read the boiling temperature of ethanol. Today, it's reading 77 and a half. And the literature says that ethanol boils at 78. So that's pretty close. Could be that the thermometer is not calibrated correctly. Could be that the atmospheric pressure is a little bit low today. Um, so the vapor now travels up here, equilibrates with the thermometer, and then it makes its way through this sidearm. And then it hits the cold region of the condenser. And when it hits the cold region of the condenser, it starts to condense. And as the vapor makes its way through here, it gets colder and colder, so it condenses more and more, hence the name. And eventually, it comes out the end here, goes through this adapter, and it drips into our receiving flask. What are we doing? Again, we're affecting a separation. We have solid and liquid on this side magnesium and ethanol. And on this side here, we have just the pure ethanol. If we were trying to separate two liquids, we could do the same thing. Uh, provided their boiling temperatures are not too close together, you can uh, heat them up. And then according to um, the equations, we have that the, the lower boiling fraction should come off first. We may have to add another straight segment between here and here. So between this section and the round bottom flask to give us more what we call theoretical plates. We just get better separation when you're trying to separate two liquids that way. Um, and finally, if you did try to separate two liquids, it might be a good idea to either stir the solution with a magnetic stirrer or add something like um, a, a boiling stone or a bumping chip to keep it from superheating. Uh, the magnesium is basically serving that role uh, in the present separation. Now, what we're shooting for is something on the order of about a drop a second. Maybe you, know, you can go a little bit faster than that, but you don't want to go a lot faster than that. And so this is doing a, at a very nice rate. Um, again, what do we do? We can affect a separation between a solid and a liquid where we're interested in the liquid phase by something called a distillation. Or we can separate two liquids by um, a distillation. And this is a very common technique. It is exactly the way that you would make gin, except instead of magnesium shavings, you'd use uh, juniper berries and lemon peels and other nice spices. Uh, and again, don't do this because don't, don't make your own gin because it's against the law.